Welcome back, Local Decision 2023. We have an election coming up in Blaine on April 11th. It's for City Council Ward 2, a special election. And one of the candidates is Leslie Larson. She joins us in studio. And thanks so much for uh, stopping by. Yes, and out of the gate, me. tell our viewers, why are you running for this position? Yeah, well, I've been a resident of Blaine for 15 years. Uh, we started with one child moving into Blaine 15 years ago, and now we have five. <laughs> so we're definitely involved in the community. And I feel that I'm qualified to run for city council starting back when uh, I went to St. Cloud State University and started my first business when I was a junior in college, and that was a staffing agency. And with that, my partner and I provided jobs for over 300 individuals in the length of the business. It ended on a successful note, it's actually still going on, but I sold my share uh, to my partner to then pursue a second business. So learned a lot in, in this span of time with these businesses. And I believe that small business is really important to every community and every city. So Blaine can definitely uh, benefit from small business. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so what uh, special attributes do you think you would bring to the city council? Well, I've been involved in uh, the political arena and with community service since about the 2020 or so year of elections. I was very involved with what was going on around 2020 and then again with the elections in 2022. And I've just been following a lot with it and become very educated with it. And gone to a lot of events, helped a lot of candidates at the state level, at the local level from school board to state representatives, house representatives, and upwards to the governorship. At one of these events, I was able to meet with Mayor Sanders and that really developed the desire for city council, learning about issues at really a local level. And since I was able to meet with him and then became interested, I've met with a lot of local people, uh, uh, previous city council members, current city council members, as well as others that are involved in the city uh, at the city level, and learned a lot from them. Since then, I've been talking to a lot of people at their doors, so really finding out what individuals want. And that's been really interesting and finding a, a very common thread, especially in Ward 2, because this would be representing Ward 2 and talking to all the various residents yep. in Ward 2 and finding out what's important to them. So all of this knowledge that I've gained and another thing that I really enjoy is watching the uh, House Committee and the Senate Committee, watching those live on TV, because a lot of what's happening at our city level starts at the state level. So being educated on what's coming and you know what interests uh, is, is happening at the state level has, has really made me understand more so even about the city. Well, a as we all know, there are certain things that uh, candidates agree on and disagree on when it comes to running for city council, but one universal thread of agreement has to be Minnesota State Highway 65. I, I mean, everybody I've talked to wants this road fixed ASAP. How can you help facilitate getting funds in and making sure that road is up to uh, the standards it needs to be? Yes, so I've learned a lot about Highway 65, <laughs> yes, from current uh, lawmakers and officials that are in the position that are active with it. So I think that I understand the pulse of what's happening with it right now. Obviously not being in the job, um, you know, I can't say, you know, exactly what, who I would meet with and things like that other than jumping in with continuing on what they've already done. But I do understand what's happening right now. So it seems as though Highway 65 needs about 170 million to be completed. And that's to build overpasses over 99th, and then again over 105th, and then again over 109th. So they have secured 40 million so far. That's 20 from Fed, 20 from State is about where it's at. They're still needed about 120 to 125 million to get the job done. So they're still a long ways out from getting it done. So hearing what they've been doing, I would just like to jump mm -hmm. on board and see where I can contribute. Because I've owned businesses in the past, I feel like I have an innovative side. Um, so I hope that that would come into play with meeting people and helping them maybe turn over rocks that haven't been turned thus far. But it's still a ways out. Yeah, unfortunately. And, and given your business background, and you're also a mom, five kids, and you're running around to the super rink or you know, the National Sports Center and schools in Blaine. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, Highway 65 horror stories, don't you? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, it's, it, it gets backed up a lot. I know that they have the funds right now that they could do yeah. 99th, 
And there's been some talk about that, about you know, do you just do part of it with some of the funds you have now? But they really want to get it done all in one swoop rather than over a long amount of time. Also, what I really hope happens is that it draws people to Blaine and doesn't just send people over Blaine. So it will be, you know, right now it's a trunk street or a trunk road yes. because it has all the branches and all the roads, and they want it to feel more like a freeway. With that said, I really see how it's going to benefit people north of us, and of course it'll benefit Blaine as we all have to be on 65 regularly. I just hope that it's, it's also considered you know, the people in Blaine and that it's not just a priority to get people through Blaine, but also that it's going to bring people to Blaine. Uh, potential apartment buildings, that, that's become a polarizing issue for some. Um, tell us where you stand. The city has a comprehensive plan, a mandate from the Met Council on uh, high density, medium density housing. Yes. Where are you on this and how should the city of Blaine move forward with apartments? I would really like to advocate for keeping low density, low density. So I would be representing Ward 2. Ward 2 is a heavily uh, residential area of the city. So we've got the lakes, we've got the TPC, we've got the sanctuary, and then some others, you know, Lexington by the barn park. And it's this whole middle section of Blaine. And a lot of these homes have been here for a very long time. A lot of the communities that I've been going into, a lot of the neighborhoods I've been going into, they've been here for 20 plus years. And we, we and I say we, because I live in the lakes, you know, I'm obviously I'm part of Ward 2. We moved here for the community feel. We moved here for the land that Ward 2 has to offer. There's a lot of land that's yet for sale, especially on 125th. And I would really like them to leave the North alone. If we have to develop it, so Mayor Sanders said to me, because again, I, I spoke with him at an event at length about a year ago. And he said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, as far as having it all developed. If that's the case, why can't we prioritize businesses over high density housing. Now the mayor has said we need the high density to bring the businesses, but we are a top 10 city for population in the state. We have about 72,000 members in our city and the city says, well, we can get to about 90,000 in 2040. I don't understand why we're trying to get this high population so fast, especially when we don't have Highway 65 completed yet. Focus on that. We don't have Lexington uh, expanded. I know that there's plans to have Lexington be three lanes on each side, and so that is in the works as well. To what stage is in the works, I'm not sure, but I know that that's eventually going to be a through street as well. But until we have those things, we can't afford to have the density. And if I expand on that, our schools, so Sunrise Elementary, for example, that's right on Main Street, and that's right where they're talking about doing all the building. That's where all the land is for sale currently. There, I mean, I guess there's land all over, but there's a huge chunk of land on Main Street. I call it Main Street because I'm from Anoka area. <laughs> a lot of people call it 125th. 125th, we'll call it. And Sunrise Elementary was built three years ago. Sunrise Elementary is 40% over capacity. And they build basing on what's existing, but also what's to right. come. And what's to come is slated, a lot of these areas were slated low density. And we're seeing even a switch of some of that low density. Just on Valentine's night, there was a town hall for land that was north of 125th. There was a huge sign up by Malmergs that said, call this sign to talk about the land development on, on 125th over by Malmergs. And it was to switch that from low density to mid density rental quads. Well, if Sunrise is built thinking that all of this land is going to be low density and now they're switching it, they're not prepared for that. So now if we add more apartment builds, we're not prepared for that. And that's really, to me, the most important issue that's going on in Ward 2 right now is how are we going to build this land because there's so much land for sale, who are they going to sell it to, and what is the zoning going to be? And that's where City Council is very important in this position because it's up to City Council to rezone or to maintain zoning, and I want to keep the zoning that is low density to keep it low density because that's why we live in Ward 2 is for the land, for the way that it looks right now. And a lot of the people in Ward 2 I've talked to said, we like the way that it is right now. We moved here because of the community feel that we have right now. So if I'm hearing you right, you, you are for slow and steady growth, but not explosive growth not as far explosive. as population. We cannot handle it, the roads can't handle it, the schools can't handle it, and you know what else can't handle it? The water can't handle it. 
and not a lot of people know that. There's a few neighborhoods that I've talked to that have well water, and they've been here long before the lakes, long before any of this explosive growth, especially this new explosive growth has happened, and they all have well water. And uh, numerous families have received letters from the city where the city will pay for them to drill deeper because their water is running dry, their wells are running dry. A resident I just talked to yesterday, he just got a second well because it's running dry. And he said that in this particular neighborhood, it was due to the water tower that was built to, again, you know, uh, provide the infrastructure for, for the building that's yet to come. And this other neighborhood, they said it was due to the new townhome developments that were right outside of their neighborhood. And it was after those townhomes were all built that then they ran out of water. We have to take care of the residents that live here before we expand to residents that don't live here that have yet to come. How do you view Blaine? Uh, as you said, it's uh, a top 10 city in Minnesota population-wise. It is. It's global when it comes to uh, what happens at the National Sports Center with the USA Cup yes. and a lot of hockey events, and then you have the 3M Open yes. uh, in July. So do you view Blaine as a tourist stop along with being a fabulous place to live and raise a family? Yes. So what they are already working on, and I think it's amazing, is what they're going to do on 105th. Now, I also, as a family, very much enjoy that area mm -hmm. because we've got five kids. Two are in hockey, three are in soccer. We are up at that particular complex every single day, numerous times a day. And we are part of the USA Cup. So we see exactly how that's run up there. We know where the families go in between the games and all of that. There is going to be a lot of building. So what happened is those fields are owned by the state. The city purchased some of those fields, the fields that are by Invictus. The city purchased those fields from the state. And that is intended, they're going to build a lake there. It's going to be called Sandy Lake. And then it's going to have nice high-end restaurants and apartment builds to suit the vibe that's going to happen there. And that's all going to be around the Invictus area. And I think it's, it's wonderful, especially because of all the tourist things we have. What we want Blaine to be is a great city to live, number one. But also, if you have, for example, an anniversary, what do you do? When you live in Blaine, if you want, you know, an anniversary, Valentine's, something real special, a lot of times you leave Blaine. You go to Roseville, you go yeah. to Maple Grove, something for a high-end restaurant, you know, and, and something really enjoyable to do. We want people from Roseville and Maple Grove to say, it's our anniversary, let's go to Blaine. And so for that, that is going to be on 105th, that is in the works, and that will be our downtown area, and it's gonna be great for all the travel and things that we have with the USA Cup. It's gonna be really nice. Do you think Blaine uh, has enough police officers? I know you have a uh, law enforcement background in your family. Yes, a lot of my family is law enforcement. They have the utmost respect from me and my family, uh, first and foremost. And what's really important with law enforcement is the perception starts at the top. That's with every city. The cities that do not have good law enforcement or don't have enough law enforcement, I should say, is because the perception at the top is very woke. And when you have woke policies, you don't have a good police force because they don't respect the police. And when the police don't feel respected, the community feels that. And then you, you have even less safety. So Roseville, for example, they're offering 50,000 incentive and they still can't get officers. Blaine has a full staff of officers. We have always been fully staffed. And we get a lot, we get a lot from Lino, I've been told, and we get a lot from other departments, but we are always fully staffed because we have the best police chief and our mayor uh, has very high respect for law enforcement and the current city council has high respect for law enforcement. And when you keep that perception positive at the top, police officers, they feel that in their day to day and they wanna stay. How important is it for people in the city, uh, Blaine is becoming more diverse for everyone to feel like the police force has their back. Well, just being respectful of the police and keeping that perception high at the top is valuable. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Well, I guess what I'm saying is when you have differing people in the population, some people have a different view of police historically. So how do you build those bridges so there's more unification than divide? I don't know, just keep doing a good job as police officers. I mean, everything is seen in action and we have a full police force, so they're not overworked, they're not stressed out, you know, as much as some of these that have lack of officers and, and are feeling burnt out. So our police force is good. There's, I don't, I don't see 
reason to, to feel otherwise with the police force in Blaine. They're good, and we, we just have to make sure that people know that we have a very good police force. Okay, so we have about a minute left. Tell the viewers why they should vote for you for this uh, city council spot. I'm passionate about Blaine. Again, I've been here for 15 years, raising my family here. I really want to make sure that Blaine continues to be a great place to raise a family. And when I say family, I mean all forms of family, you know, even families that are just newly married or, you know, all forms of families. We all want to enjoy what we have here. We can make improvements with additional businesses and things like that, but we all moved here for the excellent community vibe that Blaine has to offer. So let's just keep that great. And I feel that with my education and um, also just everyone that I've talked to at City Council and everything, I've learned a lot. And and I really feel that I'd be a good candidate for this position. And voting in this is going to be very important, especially because this is a special election and there are numerous candidates running. So if you like my positions and like what I have to say, every vote is going to matter and I really need your vote. And you can vote now until April 11th. And that's the most important part. You can vote at your convenience anytime. I believe it's like eight to four yeah. if you walk into City Hall. You can vote anytime now until April 11th or on April 11th at your normal precinct voting location. But every vote is going to count, and I really appreciate your vote. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Yes. She's Leslie Larson running for uh, Blaine City Council Ward 2, special election, and election day will be April 11th. Yay. This is Local Decision 2023.